All right, so the nervous system. So the nervous system is the electrochemical coordinator between cells. Uh, basically, this is the system that is going to help to regulate many of the other systems. And it's going to help to coordinate activity uh, and homeostatic variables to maintain conditions that are conducive for life. The nervous system follows three basic steps in this coordination process. And you can see the three basic steps here in this particular image. This is a pin, by the way. And so that pin is going to be used as a sensory input. If I were to come up and I were to poke you in the finger or stab you in the stomach with a knife, there would be information that would have <laughs> already just come in and prison shank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like, as we progress, there's been more bodily threats of bodily harm. I don't like Dr. Bowen anymore at all. He makes me want to cry. I'm scared of him. I would like that he brings that baseball bat when he puts him in the corner. <laughs> so, three basic steps in coordination. We have the sensory signal. We're going to have sensory organs. You can see here we have nerve endings. It could be a, a real uh, organ such as um, some of the uh, tissues that we find in the circulatory system that respond to changes of pressure or blood chemistry. So we have all sorts of different types of sensory organs or sensory receptors. In this case, this would be an example of something called a, uh, a proprioceptor, which is going to help us to uh, identify pain stimuli. Now, we have that signal that gets sent back into the central nervous system, either into the spinal cord or into the brain. But we have literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of sensory nodes or organs or nerve endings that are constantly sending information into the central nervous system. How do we keep track of all of that information? That sensory information, when it comes in, it comes in coded. So it's not just a signal to the central nervous system. It's a signal that carry, carries some sort of information. And wrapped up in that information, we're going to be able to determine where it's coming from. Is it coming from the index finger, or is it coming from the tip of the middle finger? Is it coming from the circulatory system or from the integumentary system, from the muscle or from another portion of the nervous system? So the signal comes in coded, and it also gives an indication of what type of signal is actually being propagated. What's the signal that's present? Is it a pain signal? Is it a painful stimuli? Or maybe it's a pleasurable stimuli. So that coded signal is sent in through a sensory process to the central nervous system. Once that signal gets into the central nervous system, it's going to be collected. So we're going to collect data. We're going to evaluate that data. So it's not just simply collecting up and putting the data into a bin. It's going to also include what does this data actually mean, and then we're going to dictate a response. So we're going to collect the data, evaluate the data, and then dictate the response.
And the response that gets dictated, that dictation of, of a response, the command is provided to glands and muscles that will propagate the response. <coughs> so here in this case, the pin comes in and pokes into your finger. That sensory and nerve ending picks up the, the information. That sensory coded information comes back into the central nervous system, loops in an arc out to a muscle in the finger that causes the finger to recoil away from that noxious stimuli. It's a very simple kind of arc pathway, and for the most part, we can model very complex reactions to stimuli in this format. And that, in fact, is the purpose of the nervous system, is to respond to those stimuli, to, res to collect and evaluate that data, and then to respond appropriately. So, you know, if your girlfriend comes in and goes to kind of grab your hand, if I were to do it, the correct response is to punch me in the face. <laughs> if your girlfriend were to do it, the correct response is to not punch her in the face. So hopefully... I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, it just did get violent in here. You're scary, dude. <laughs> Central nervous system is subdivided into a variety of different components. So we have subdivisional anatomy. The two big categories are going to be the central and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system or the CNS, not the CN3. Central nervous system is going to include both the brain and the spinal cord. So the brain and the spinal cord and the brain and the spinal cord are going to be encased in the cranial and vertebral cavities. Encased in the cranial and vertebral cavities. The second subdivision is going to be the peripheral nervous system. Which we can abbreviate as the PNS. PNS. Careful when you say that. <laughs> knew what you were all thinking. <laughs> Don't say it too fast. Or just say peripheral nervous system. We'll get to that system at the end of next semester. So the peripheral nervous system Central nervous system is the brain and then the spinal cord. Everything else is going to be our peripheral nervous system, all the peripheral nerves. Now, each of these peripheral nerves, a nerve is a reference to an organ. The cells that make up nerves are... <laughs> I'm kidding, the neurons? What the heck? Come on, I'm trying to teach you. I'm so mature. <laughs> So a nerve, when we talk about a nerve, and we'll get back into this, nerve is going to have a bunch of fascicles in it. 
So we're going to have a nerve that's bundled up and it's going to be a bunch of fascicles and then each of those fascicles will have individual neurons in each of those fascicles. Okay? So a single nerve may carry hundreds, thousands of neurons. And those neurons, each individual neuron is going to have a specific purpose and a specific location that it goes to. So the peripheral nervous system, being all of the other tissue, is going to include the nerves, which are the wrapped portions or axons or nerve fibers of the neuron. And then this other portion of the neuron called the ganglion, or I should say the cell bodies that are wrapped up in the ganglion. So you can't really see it here, but there's a chain that runs right down alongside the spinal cord. And there's little clumps of tissue there. And those little clumps of tissue are called ganglion. Okay, and those ganglion are going to be clumps of tissue containing cell bodies. So the cell bodies where the nucleus is is going to be located in these chains called ganglion. And then we're going to have the nerves that lead away that are going to contain the axons of the individual neurons or the nerve fibers of those neurons. Now, because of this organization here where I have a bunch of fascicles that bundle up individual neurons, have hundreds or thousands of neurons present in our individual nerves, we're going to divide up those individual neurons by their location, where are they going, and what they do. And those are going to be secondary divisions of the PNS. So in the secondary division, <clears throat> we can have neurons that act in sensory capacity. They can also be referred to as afferent, meaning they carry a signal towards the central nervous system. So towards the central nervous system. And then Is information about changes. Like, hey, you have a needle sticking into your finger, or blood pressure is changing, or the blood chemistry is changing, or that girl is really pretty. That would be sensory information that may get sent back to the central, central nervous system. Then we have a subdivision for motor neurons. These are going to be efferent. Efferent meaning they carry signals from the central nervous system. And those signals, as you can see here, sensory bringing back into central nervous system, motor leading away from the central nervous system and going someplace such as a neuromuscular junction to cause a change in that mu uh, muscle. Or it could be to a gland. Or it could be to another organ, say, I don't know, the kidney or something like that. And this results in stimulation stimulation of glands and muscle cells, 
to react. Collectively, the glands and the muscles and the stuff that's doing the reacting, we can call the effectors. So in the peripheral nervous system, we can have our sensory neurons and we can have our motor neurons, but we don't in there. We actually go to one more level, a tertiary division. And that tertiary division is going to be based off of how the response occurs. <clears throat> 